Hello everyone and welcome back to the White Shirt channel. I'm sure most of you have all the tackle cleaned down, ready to spray, stop, rods dusted off, and the lures out, ready, sharpened, maybe even treated yourself to a few new lures. Some of you may even have a place sorted where you're intending to go to fish. But if you decided what you're going to do when you get there, in tonight's episode, I'm going to take a wee look at early season cold water tactics. Some of the methods and techniques I like to use in the early part of the season. Firstly, starting off, main lines. I've moved to braided lines for quite some time now. And what I like about a braided line is the sensitivity. You'll feel every knock, every tap from a fish. And the added bonus with braid is if you start your file your lures, you'll be easily able to take them out. Don't spend much money on it. Uh, this lady braid, 0.14 millimeters, 15 pound. More than suitable for pulling out any lure that you'll file up. And any patches of kelp or rag. Now, five fishermen will put on a leader onto their fly line, maybe running in the eight, nine foot long. I don't see why you should do any different with braid. What I would on top of the braid it's ten pound fluorocarbon. This Berkey training stuff's probably my favourite. It's a really, really low density. It's low as water, so it's practically invisible. The fish um, convinced can't see it at all. Ten pound, strong enough to pull you out of any patches of kelp or weed you're going to get stuck in. Onto the ten pound, I'll fish the tippet of eight pound fluorocarbon. This just helps a wee bit when we come through under our line 3 rigs and under the dropper rigs. This gives you that wee bit of extra camouflage for the line. Now there's two different types of main line rig will set up. First off, if I'm fishing a fixed lure, this will just tie off a snap swivel at the bottom end. Fantasy just snaps swivel. You can easily change lures as many times as you want. On the snap swivel, or attach 67 by 70 centimeters of fluorocarbon, straight through. End of that, a tiny small barrel swivel. These wee barrel swivels are about size 12 or size 14. If you notice, We'll tie through to the bottom half of the swivel. Under the top half of a small piece of fluorocarbon tied off, approximately six, seven centimeters long. You don't want this to be any longer. This is where we'll attach your dropper fly to. Now I've seen a few videos with different styles and variations of where to attach a dropper fly. <laughs> Why I like attaching the jobber fly here is when we've got our lure spinning on the bottom half. The vibrations come through the swivel and come off onto our jobber fly, which doesn't move. This is attached on the leader. And as you can see, this small piece of line, this is a lot easier to change and tie a fly to. Once you tie a fly, what you're going to end up doing is when you change fly, your leader is going to drop shorter and shorter and shorter. It's a lot easier just to change a small 6-7 centimeter piece of line up here at the top of the swivel than it is in the middle of our line if we were to attach it with a surgeon's drop or not. So for pure laziness and handiness, I think this time of year, cold fingers, this is a lot easier to set up. Than anything else. If we're fishing with the line through lure, 
setup's basically the same. Oh my god. Swivel at the top. Dropper. Attached to the top half of the swivel. Comes through 60, 70 centimeters. Fluorocarbon attached again on there. there. I just want to show how I set up most of the line through there. As you can see, feed your line through the top of there. Slide it on. Beads. Right to go. A hard bead setting off. And a soft bead. Why well, I set this up in this manner? It's the hard bead. Rotates a lot, lot smoother in the water as opposed to it sitting straight on top of the rubber bead. However, the rubber bead's on the protector knot under the spring ring. The spring ring's attached to the split ring and pops on the hook. As you can see, a lot sits down like that. Now, when we're fishing the line through, the secret to it is to keep the tension on the line. If you cast out and you allow your line through to sink straight down without inducing tension, as soon as your lure hits the water, close the bail, reel in a few turns, get the tension in the line. If you don't, the lure is going to fall through the water just like this. It will be spinning away. Any fish hit it, they are nowhere near the hook. You're going to completely miss the fish. If you have it falling under tension, or hooks back there, any fish, they're caught on it straight away. Those are just the two rigs like the setup. Either rather I'm using hard body lures that are fixed or a length race. Don't mind the few lures that will be in the box this time of year. First off, Hanson Hot Shot. Again, talked about this in a previous video. Absolutely amazing lure. The weights this time of year really enjoys the weights. Another great lure on the white variety is a Savage Gear Shirling. This lure really has an amazing rotation when you stop under tension, let it fall back down. Nice straight wobble too. Once you've started retrieving, stop it again and it just rotates straight back down. Almost like a knife handle shape, this lure. But again, early part of the year, the white colours, they really, really seem to love it. If the white's not doing it for you, another excellent lure list to use this time of year is the pink. This is a Savage Gear 93 Sugar. Again, this is one of my favourites. Definitely not be leaving home without this lure in the box. Again, as you can see, I think these are actually a representation of an eel pout more than a sand eel. But that pink colour in the cold water really doesn't just the takes from the sea trout. Sort of crossover line through lure. Heading into almost a coastal waterway. Talked about them before, the Western Trout Runner. I love this weekend. Sometimes you'll find that the sea trout do start to get picky in the winter and they are looking a natural coloured lure. And as you can see, it's all blue hues. That does the ticket. Looking on them. They're coastal wobblers now. Again, the white and peach, pot of grease and powder. Again, very, very favourite of mine. Fast and salt, these are great lures at this time of year. You fish them really, really slow. Fish them right off the bottom. Again, here I have it. And pickled sardine colour. What you'll find with sea trout at this time of year is because the water is cold, their metabolic rate isn't as high. So they'll just be hanging off the bottom. Maybe in the warmer afternoons you'll find they'll come into the shallower bays. Seem to love the mud at this time of year. It heats up that wee bit quicker if you can get a bit of sun. 
Not for man and they'll be looking for things like sticker backs. You can see this we Western salt they represent so it's absolutely brilliantly. It's all about matching the hatch this time of year. Observe what you can see on the edges of the water. Usually you won't go far wrong trying to imitate it. Things get a little clearer. A little tough. I'll bring out the Maxi Gobi. Again, you can also get away with using the Maxi Gobi at this time of year in the clear water. The pink. You often find nice clear conditions. The pink will only just a strike. No matter what time of the day it is. Again, moving on. Back to the way. There's a bit of a theme going on with these lures. Again, it's up to you. This is the Albion Moho Slim. Another great lure. Very, very subtle action. Not too much wobble, just slight subtleness. Sometimes in the winter, too, you'll find just that slow, subtle wobble. That'll appeal to them. Hard body lures next. Mel's. I've seen before, early on in the season. Sand eels appearing. So again, we want to be representing those sand eels. That's the lure of the western salt peeling. A great example of a sand eel lure. The advantage of this lure fishes out a wee bit deeper, which is ideal because we'll all come up against winds and rough conditions sea trout fishing. If you use a lighter lure sometimes it's just going to skate on the top of the water. What I like about these soft peelings is they'll fish that wee bit deeper. And as I say, this time of year the fish will be that wee bit deeper. You can see the holographic reflection on these lures. Catch me as much as the fish sometimes. All the sand they representations again. We've got a little one from Kinetics. This is called the Horn Fisk. Again, that pot of grease in colour, right in the page. This one's a silver back finish. A few lures are great if you're looking to represent the smaller side of the sand eels. I find as the sea trout seem to be focused more on the commons and the lesser sand eels rather than the greater sand eels. Seem to be as keen on taking the big launch as it do as the smaller ones. More realistic version. Again, green back, silver flanks, silver back and these lures, more of a realistic representation. Again, these wee lures came from a set, weren't very expensive, five lures in the box. They're pretty pretty effective. Especially in the early part of the season. And you can use these lures in a wee bit calmer. And you're not looking to hold as deep. So we're in the mid-water column. Nice speckle finish to these lures. When we're talking about white lures for sea trout. I believe a small white lure pretty much started the whole trend in white lures for sea trout fishing. The Western Boss, it's a copper nickel little spoon plate of white. It's not very fancy, as plain as you can get, but in those cold mornings, the water's nice and clear. This can really induce the strikes big time. I've used this wee lure and I've seen three and four fish following in behind it at once, and almost fighting over who got to take it. A highly effective wee lure. Coming in the eight grams, easy enough cast out in most conditions. Touched in the last video also about the fire tiger. Again, a fire tiger is another good card to throw out if you're finding conditions in them clear, clear water conditions. It stands out really, really well. If there's any sea trout in the vicinity, we'll be able to pick that off from quite a distance off. So why it works, I have absolutely no idea. The only thing I can think is it imitates the, the sticklebacks, the green hue on it. 
You'll notice there's a stack of box if you've ever found them. It's got quite a long, elongated shape, and the green stands out more than any other colour on them. Copper. Again, another great card. Never ever leave the house without a copper lure, especially this time of year. Coming into the spring, we'll get the clear nights coming on with the frost in the evening. Sometimes what you find is these lures will just stand out that wee bit better than anything else in the water. It'll be a wee card to play again, as I say, if you've got clear conditions. Sometimes it will just take your fish for nothing else well. Looking at the types of flies that we can use for droppers, again that will be dependent on what type of lure I'm actually using. I do enjoy teaming up, for example, a hot shot with a small pink fly. There's a UV tan shrimp. What I like about these wee shrimps is when the lure drops right back down to the bottom, the shrimp will just slowly sink. And sometimes if it's see trout just come in and take the fly as the lure's been hitting on the bottom. Again, it's up to you what colour of flies you use. I always like to use the shrimp representations early point of the year. And go back to using, again, the fire tiger colour. Team it up with the wee chain eye, green shrimp representation. Again, it's all suggesting into what patterns you think. You can have as much fun as you want, mixing and matching the different style of flies. Do your lure. Again, if you're going back to the blues, have to try the blue coastal wobber. Again, three sandy representation in blue. You can team that up, have the two. Absolutely work a wonder together. You're not limited though, the use using the flies as droppers. I'm sure quite a few of you. I've come across the Bombarda floats. Now, it's not the most highly exciting form of fishing, but it is an effective form of fishing. Especially when you're coming into the early part of the season. You may notice patches of seagulls tightly sitting in the water, picking things up out of the water, long worms. When we're coming on to March, April, what you find is the ragworms will begin to swarm up in the water. Like they're usually triggered on by the full moons at the end of March and April. These flies are highly effective fish under the bombarda floats. Again, I'd recommend fishing these fairly slow. So still let them be linked. Worm in the water. It's, it's very linked at shape. Notice the pulse and the swim off it. These big ragworm flies imitate them absolutely brilliantly. Again, the bump out of floats, it's entirely up to yourself what style of flies you use. You can use pink, you can use white, you can use bait fish representations, or polar magnuses, highly effective fly. What's good about using the polar magnus is the critical thing with using the bombarda is making sure that the leader unfurls at the end of the cast. So to do this, you, it's critically important that you stop the line coming out before the float hits the water. Maybe three, four seconds before you know the float's going to hit the water, stop it. This enables the leader to unfurl and your fly land out in the water. If you don't, what will happen is you'll end up with your fly up here and your float sitting forward. Another wee tip with the bombard is, is to fix them solid so that there's no give. What I've actually done with this one is insert a small piece of steel wire up the inside and change this at the end of the fishing session. But what this enables is when you cast the bombarda originally comes in a line through capacity. 
you don't have the bombard effect spot you'll find as it slides right up your braided main line and you'll end up with worse tangles so fixing it two small swivels kind of top end to your braided main line bottom end eight foot nine foot fluorocarbonate to ten pound liter and that's all you really need to fish the bombard is as you can see here they come with this highly reflective finish on them and a good tip to do is to take that away and just clear all that off a small kitchen brillo pad does that as you can see it gives it a bit more of an opaque colour to it and that doesn't reflect as much in the sunlight as a brand new one 